what is it about cockies that makes them able to actually open bins? Well, there's obviously some physical strength required. It's, it's, it's not light to open a bin, but it's also cognitively difficult to work out how to do this action. It isn't just about physical strength, it's about the ability to problem solve, right? Exactly. So the most difficult aspect of it probably is that it's hidden food. So it requires them to first understand that there is food in these red littered bins and they do target the red littered so bins. So they know it's they red know where bins. the food is. Yeah. And then they have to go through this sequence of behaviours to successfully open the bin in the hope that there'll be food in there. And that seems to actually take them months to learn. The cockatoo's ability to open a bin lid is rare in the avian world. It may seem easy, but for a bird, this is Einstein stuff. So cockatoos are actually, um, we think about, as intelligent as a small primate. So these are really smart animals. They have a relatively large brain size for their body, but also they have an incredibly dense brain. It's packed full of neurons. So their brain isn't like as anywhere near as big as ours, but it's got no. heaps packed in there. It's only about the size of a walnut, oh, but God. in that walnut <laughs> there is no wasted space. Wow. And that allows them the same sort of brain power as a much, much larger primate. Lucy's team observed that the cockies hanging around the bins were made up of two key behavioural types. There's about 10 to 20% of the population who know how to open bins. So a small percentage so. of the population, yeah, actually. not so many. And then the majority of birds are what we call scroungers. So they hang around waiting for another bird to open a bin and then they all come in for the bonanza. It's like a bin party, really, when it, when it really goes off, isn't it? It sort of fits with what we know about the cocky psyche. <laughs> they like a bit of a party. The team have been plotting the spread of this behaviour in the greater Sydney area. And I have observed that birds within a flock will imitate the bin flipping behaviour of those in the know, a process called social learning. And that has resulted in distinct bin opening methods in neighbouring flocks of birds. So you have knowledgeable individuals and they're being watched very closely by others because they obviously want to learn this beneficial behaviour and they pick it up and then it spreads through the populations through this form of you know, spread of innovation just like the spread of new technology or fashions in human populations. These are long-lived birds that have to learn a lot living in these novel environments and copying new beneficial behaviours they see others doing to cope with this enormous change that they're undergoing as we modify their habitats so drastically. But now, annoyed by the rubbish spilling everywhere, residents are fighting back. No longer are we just changing the cockies' behaviour, they are changing ours. We think it, it could potentially be a cultural arms race between cockatoos and humans. So what we observe is that people obviously don't want their rubbish spread everywhere, so they very understandably come up with ways to protect their bins. And it's actually quite incredible how creative the local residents have been in the methods they use to do this. But we need to do much more research from the cockatoo side to really have direct evidence <laughs> of what they're able to do and who is able to defeat these bin protection measures. At my place, uh, we've got sticks behind each of the bins uh, in between the hinge and the lid, so they can open it to a degree, but they can't, they can't get their heads into the bin to have a look around. So I guess they're a bit scared of, uh, of the lid <laughs> dropping down on top of them. <laughs> And there's more to the story. It appears that locals learn these cunning bin protection measures from their neighbours, just like the cockies. So we have evidence that 
people are more likely to use the same protection measure as their neighbour as they are to the person at the same distance from them but who's out of sight, like, right. like the person behind them. So that really does suggest that they're observing what the people on their street are doing and thinking, well, that works, I'll try that as well. And then you end up with these really local traditions for particular types of bin protection. I think it's actually really fascinating to think about how we're almost in a dialogue with our urban animals. They're changing their behaviour in response to very close observation of us, but we're also changing our behaviour because of the presence of these animals. Mm -hmm.